Lights Out for the Devil and Mr. O. And now, if you haven't already done so, turn off your lights now and listen to Big Mr. Little. Police Police Department. My name is Charles Crager. Dr. Charles Crager. I live at 872 West Street, apartment 2B. I want you to come and get me. I have just killed a man. Jay Drogan. Did you hear me? I said, come and get me. I just killed a man. His name was... to bet on it. I'm willing to... I'm telling you, sure, my name is Jay Drogan. I'm gonna drink this. Jay, forget it, will you? You better lie down and get some rest. Let me lie. Take your hands off me. I said I was gonna drink this mess and I'm gonna drink it. Right out of the cocktail sticker. What you doing? He's really drinking it. Holy cats, look at him. Oh, boy. Oh, that was terrific. How how did it taste? Wonderful. I... I... uh... Jay! He's sick. No, no, I'm all right. Hot in here. Window. Want window open. The windows. Who broke all the windows? Oh, my head. Now what time? Nine. I've got to get up. Get to work. Oh. 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 Huh? All dressed. Bed in my clothes. Put me to bed. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh. Oh, all right, all right. All right. Hello, Jay Drogan speaking. Who? Oh, yeah. Uh, hello, friend. Sure, sure, I'm coming down to the office. Party? All right, all right. A man got to have some fun once in a while, can't he? I got to wash up. I. All right, I'll be down here. Goodbye. Son of a... Where's my hat? Well... What? Windows broken? <laughs> Some party. Uh, tell superintendent get windows fixed. Wonder what. Oh, well. Better get to the office. Good thing the building has an elevator. Couldn't walk downstairs. Uh, good morning, there, Mr. Drogan. Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Jensen. I was. Just... What the devil's the matter with this elevator? I've been punching this button for five minutes. Well, it takes time for it to come down when it's up on the top floor. It takes the time. The devil for... with the time. It's always going wrong, that elevator. I wish that blasted thing would fall through the basement. Hey, it's falling. It, it fell. Just like you said. Oh, then, Drogan, sit down. Sit down. Thank you, Doctor. It was good of you to see me without an appointment. Well, you seem to be in quite a state. What is it? It's, uh, it's my head. You injured it? No, no, uh, I don't think so. You see, I had a little party at my house last night. Oh, my head. <laughs> oh, never mind, never mind. Well, this certainly is the morning after the night before. Go over to the window and let me look at you. Yes, Doctor. It's it's my head, Doctor. Every sound... It's just the morning after. But every sound... That blasted airplane up there, it's so loud in my head, no, Doctor. No, no, I... don't get excited. Why does that infernal pilot have to fly so low? Blast you up there, why don't you crack up? Look. He's falling. Falling. What you said, Drogan, really happened. Step back now. Move away. Keep away. All right, Drogan, we, we better be moving on. Yeah, you come back to my office, and I'll give you a sedative, and you lie down and rest a little while, and then you'll be all right. Yeah, 
coincidences. That's nothing old. That's all it was. Nothing more. Oh, watch out, man. Watch out where you're walking. It's okay. Mm. It's okay. And now we can cross. Hey, you! How do you like that guy? Blasted cabs, they think they own the street. If I had my way, I'd smash them all out. Stop! Stop! It's happened again. Drink this. No, I tell you, drink this. I don't want to. It isn't what you want to do. It, it's a sedative. Now, drink it. Putting me to sleep for a little while is no now, help. Last night. Think about last night. Perhaps you, well, drank something out of the ordinary. Well, why do you look at me like that? I, I did. What? Uh, that drink, I, I just remember. Tell me. But, but that couldn't be it. Tell me. Well, we got a kidding about who could mix the most unusual drinks and... I was feeling high, and I mixed one. Well, what was in the drink? I... I don't know. Well, you must know. If I knew what was in the drink, perhaps some chemical... Oh, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? To the office. Well, what... Fred, my business. I, I've got this... No. Are you completely out of your head? You're a menace, a walking danger. Don't you realize that you can't go out of here until we figure this out, some way to stop it? If you don't, every time you say a negative thought... It'll happen, and someone will die. Do you want that? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Why should you laugh? Stop it. Stop it. Well, it's funny. I go to see my doctor because I'm going out of my head, and he goes out of his head. But what happened to you that all of a sudden you should... You said that I was a menace. When you said that, all at once, everything cleared up. What? Yeah. <laughs> me, a menace. That's the funniest thing anybody ever said about me. Look at me. No hair, half my teeth aren't my own. I've cut a pot belly, and I'm a menace. Yeah, you, a doctor who's supposed to judge things only by facts, suddenly decide I'm a menace. Why? Because three screwy things happened that I had nothing to do with. And I had nothing to do with. Coincidences. Like getting four aces two times running, or rolling seven 25 times in a row, or anything else where two and two doesn't add up to four. Well, that... That elevator would have fallen anyway, and, and that plane, so his mo motor cut out just when I said it. And, and the cabs, we were both so scared that we ran off without finding out whether or not there was a good reason why three cabs smashed up. Sure, cabs have accidents all the time. So, well, does that make me a menace? I ask you. Is that the way for a doctor to talk? Well, I'm sorry. Of course you're right. I'm talking like an emotional moron. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? I'm the man who has always evaluated situations through factual evidence. And even then, I've retained some measure of skepticism because I know how, well, how misleading human observation can be. Trogan, would you mind shaking hands with a blasted fool? Sure, Doc. And you're shaking hands with one, too. Uh, now, if you don't mind, can I use your telephone? Sure. Of course, of course. I've got to call my office, explain why I'm late. Oh, had me scared for a while. Hello. Hello, that you, Fred? Yes, I'm on my way in. But I, I tell you, I'll be there in a few minutes. But I'm telling you. I know, I know, but I'm coming. Oh, stop yelling at me. Why didn't you drop dead? Fred. Hey, Fred. What's the matter? What's the matter? Why, I don't know. One minute I was talking to him and then... Fred, Fred, answer me. No, it can't be. You're lying. Hello? Hello? Drogan, what is it? Tell me. Someone said Fred just dropped dead. What? What time is it, Doctor? One. I can't just sit here. No, no. You're, you're my responsibility. I... I've got to think something out. I, I just can't keep on not thinking anything. Great Godfrey. What? What's the matter with me? You can perform miracles. I'm convinced of that. All right. Then why in the name of common sense can't you perform positive miracles instead of negative ones? I, I don't understand. Listen to me. It, it's simple. It's so simple that neither one of us thought of it. Just as you can kill people and cause accidents, why can't you do good? Good? 
heal the sick, give eyes to the blind. But when it comes to killing, kill the ones who should be killed. That's right. Maybe I could do that. Oh, wait a minute. It's all clear now. Every miracle that you performed today was a negative miracle. The falling elevator, the airplane, the taxis, your friend. Everything negative. You haven't performed a single positive miracle. Not a miracle for good instead of evil. Well, come with me. Where? Out into the street again. Come on, Drogan. We've got to find out if you can perform a good miracle just as easily as performing the other kind. And if you can, well, you'll start making history in a few minutes, Mr. Drogan. <laughs> What? On the corner, the newsman. He's blind. Well, don't be stupid. We'll go over to him. Faber? Faber, get your paper. Hello, Tom. That you, doctor? Yes, give me a magazine. Well, anyone will do. Yes, sir. Wish it, Drogan. Wish that he could see. I am, I am. Hey, uh, doctor. How have you been? Oh, never mind about me. How about you? Huh? How about your eyes? <laughs> Are you kidding? Drogan, out loud. You've got to say it out loud. Hey, Doc, what's the matter? Say it. I wish that he could see. Hey, hey what, what's going on here? Tom, you see. You do see. What's the matter with you, Doc? You can see. Let me alone, will you? What, what are you trying to do? What, what are you after? Can you see? Oh, oh, I can't see. Get the devil away from here. I can't see. All right, Brogan. Come on. Yeah. What does it mean? Whatever you want to do that's good doesn't happen. But whatever you say that's evil happens. God help you, Drogan. Well, I know I'll give it a disbelief. <sighs> Well, have a good sleep, friend Rogan? Yeah. Why? Why did I fall asleep? A sedative I gave you. Oh. Drogan, I want you to meet my wife. How do you do? Oh. Well, it's a pleasure, Mrs. Craker. Yeah. Let me give you a hand. No, no, no. I'm all right. Yeah, of course. Uh. Rogan, I've told the entire story to my wife. She's clear headed about this. I'll let her tell you what she thinks. Go ahead, Anne. Mr. Drogan, Charles thinks you're a menace to humanity. I don't think so. I think the danger to others is not through you, but through somebody else. You don't know what I mean. Well, that's understandable. I mean, you wouldn't willfully hurt anyone. But what if someone forced you to? What if your ability to perform miracles... Evil miracles? Yes, evil miracles was discovered by some criminal. He would force you to do what he wanted, at no risk to himself, because since the criminal was performing an evil act, you couldn't hurt him. In other words, Drogan, someone could use you for criminal purposes. Yes, blackmail the world because you thought he could kill anyone in the world. You haven't said anything, Mr. Drogan. You do understand? Yes, I, I understand. What do you expect me to do about it? We don't expect you to do anything. The responsibility is beyond you or us. Whatever happens is up to the proper authorities. Uh, authorities? My wife means that what we must do is to tell the authorities of what happened. It's a wonderful idea. Trogan, I'm proud of you. A wonderful idea. Yeah, yes, of course, but why do you keep on saying that? You gave me a wonderful idea. But that's not important now. We've got to go to the authorities. All of us. No. Why should you say no? I, I'm not going anywhere. Neither are you. What? Charles, why should he say... Wait. What's the matter? Nothing. I'm not going any place, or you. What do you mean? Sit down. What the devil for? Sit down. No, I don't see what... Doctor. I'll let you talk. Now let me. Well, in my own way, I figured out the world. A long time ago. And that's why I was satisfied. Now, you see, it's like this. Some people are born with more than other people. 
One man has more brains, so he's an Einstein. Another fellow's born with good looks, so, so he's a movie star like that, that, that Taylor fellow. Another has muscles that work better, so he's a Joe Lewis. Another one's got more energy, so he's an Edison. Most people are born with just enough brains and muscles to get along in a plain, ordinary life like me. I knew that. So I was satisfied. Then, then this happened to me. All at once, all I've got to do is say something, and, and then it happens. Not good things, we found that out, but whatever I say that's wrong happens. I can do what anybody else in the world would like to do, we can't do. No army or navy or air force. I can say that somebody should die or, or that something should, should burn or break or fall, and it happens. You know, at first it was the same for me as for you, Doctor. I, I couldn't believe it was really so. Then, then while I was lying here, I heard you and your wife talking, and I began to figure things out. And you both gave me the real idea. Dempsey and Joe Lewis and Tunney and those fellows who had better muscles made themselves millions. So did Edison and Ford and, and Chrysler and the rest of them who had brains. Now, I had something. Why shouldn't I get paid off, too? Paid off? That's right. How? You, you said it before. What? Uh, I think you call it blackmail. Charles! The way you both look at me, you'd think I'd said something you hadn't said before yourself. Anybody that's any good to the world, I can kill. All right. These people get paid off in this world for not letting other people starve. So I'll get paid off for not making people die. That's a pretty bad joke. Joke? No. Of course you're joking. No. You don't mean that. Sit down, doctor. Doctor, I said for you to sit down. Don't you order me around. Now stop this nonsense and... Oh. I brought you some tea, Mrs. Craker. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Frederick. Just put the tray Wait down. a minute. Uh, take that tray out of here. Go ahead. Take it out. But I... I take orders only from Mrs. Craker. Is that so? Well, why don't you die? He's dead, isn't he, Doctor? Yes. So you see, it isn't nonsense. You devil, you! Well, up to now, it's always been plain Sam. I never thought that you... That's just it. You should never underestimate a little man, now, now should you? Charles, do you hear me call the police? He hears you, but he won't do anything about it, will you, Charles, Doctor? don't just sit there. This man is a murderer. He killed Doctor, Frederick. Doctor, your wife is talking police. a little too much, Why isn't you she? Sit there, won't you please? Doctor, do you hear me? I suggest you tell your wife to shut her mouth. Charles! Or maybe you'd like me to say something this? to her. The words I you said about me? the servant. You the Suppose I said, Mrs. Craker, Charles! I wish... Charles! You... Stop! Will you please do something about And stop it. Stop. You hear me? Stop it. Now, it'll be all right, dear. It'll be all right. Of course it will. As long as we're sensible about this. Now then, what is my plan? Now, very simply this. You and your wife are going to help me get everything in the world that I want. Yes, everything. What I tell you to do, you will do. Um, uh, letters. I, I will decide on three influential gentlemen in our government, and three wealthy gentlemen in industry to whom you will send letters explaining about me. Now, they won't believe, but at the time I tell them to, they'll die, and the newspapers will know about it. And after that, everyone will believe me, now, won't they? And so as not to die, everyone will do exactly as I want, won't they? Because they won't have any choice in the matter. They send soldiers against me. I'll wish that they'll be dead, and, and they will be dead. And soon, from Washington to London to Moscow, everyone will be doing exactly what Sam Drogan wants them to do. That'll be wonderful, won't it? All the good people of the world doing exactly what one little man wants them to do. Well, you haven't said anything, Doctor. You understand what I'm talking about, don't you? Yes. It was inevitable. Of course, I, I won't want you and your wife to leave here. Now then, we, we'd better have this man's body removed, and then we'd better get to work. Or have you any suggestions? Do you mind if I have a Drink? Drink? Not at all. Not at all. A drink started all this, didn't it? Go right ahead, Doctor. Thank you. A and you, Mrs. Crager, you're quite all right now, aren't you? Yes, I'm sure you are, the way you sit there looking at me. 
You and your husband will do exactly as I say because you're both good people and I'm deaf to good people. And you know that now, don't you? Yes, I'm sure my wife knows that. Your drink. Oh, yes. Oh, and quite a full one. Thank you, doctor. I, uh, I drink to, to your continued good health. <clears throat> Well, a strong one and a good one. Thank you, Doctor. I, uh, I, what, drink, oh, my throat, you, you put, no, wouldn't dare. I'll kill. Charles, what did you, you, he, kill. Charles, he's going to. Wait. I wish you both were. Charles, you killed. Yes. Poison worked more slowly than should have, but it worked. Jorgen, you made one mistake. You should never underestimate what good people can do. If they have to. Oh. 